that benefited off of this. The same children who are the descendants of the slave masters that brutalized, raped, and destroyed these people until this very day. One more time. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 41. Come on. Prepare slaughter for his children. Prepare slaughter for his, the slave master's children. Come on. For the iniquity of their father. For the iniquity, meaning the wickedness of their fathers. Come on. That they do not rise and don't possess their land. The Lord said to do this because if you don't deal with this problem, yeah. they're going to rise and possess the land. This land, whose land is this initially? The North American Indians. Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Barbados, all these lands either are controlled or conquered by the white man or have some type of influence from the white man, whether he's in America or England or Spain or France. So the Lord said, read that part again, that they what? That they, they, look, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fear the faith of the world with city. See, and that's what's happening now. So in Judgment Day, you ain't gonna let them run free because they're gonna fill the world with cities, uh, they're gonna steal the land, they're going to defile the land. They're going to teach you homosexuality. So there's nothing wrong with that. To be a lesbian, there's nothing wrong with that. They're going to poison the food and destroy the minds of the children like they're doing today. So on Judgment Day, you mean our, our Romans 13 11, in Judgment Day, that's not going to go down. Now, what about forgiveness? When the Lord said to forgive, the Lord wasn't, when Jesus Christ said that, who is Jesus Christ talking to? Was he talking to the whole planet? Was there a, a rainbow of people or, 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 or a conglomerate of this, different nationalities? He was teaching to forgive and to love, or was it the Jews? It was the Jews. Before you read that, go to Matthew 121. When Jesus Christ came on the scene, he didn't come for everybody. He came for the children of Israel. He didn't come for everybody. Everyone was looking for the Messiah to come, but not the Romans, not the Africans. Who was looking for the Messiah to come? The Jews. That's what the Bible says. You believe in God, don't you? Yeah, I don't believe you. I'm, I'm quite sure you do. Read that real quick. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Check it out. What's your name, by the way? Iro. Huh? Iro. Iro? Iro, check it out. Come on. And she shall bring forth a son. And she is Mary. The Lord said, and she shall bring forth a son. It was prophesied that the Messiah would come. And the Lord said, and he sh she shall bring forth a son. Come on. And thou shalt call the name Jesus. And Mary, thou shalt call this child's name Jesus. Which means he saved. Come on. But, but he shall save his people. He shall save his people. Jesus had a people. Like you have a people, I have a people. Who is Jesus Christ's people? The Jews. And the Lord said, he shall save his people. Not the world like the Christians teach you. He shall save his people. Come on. From their sins. From their sins. What sins? When you break the laws of God. So we have broke the law so much that we needed a sacrifice on this earth. That sacrifice was our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. Verse 22. No, no, read it again for me. I'm sorry. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Check it out. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call the name Jesus, Come on. for he shall save his people from their sin. For he shall save his people from their sin. What is sin again? When you break the laws of God. So when the Lord, let me go back to uh, Romans 13, 11. So when you break the laws of God, what do you got to do? You got to repent back to God and get yourself right. But the laws wasn't given to everybody. Who were the laws of God given to? Say it again. To the Jews. Read that real quick. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. No, no, sorry. Read the 10th verse. 10th verse, sorry. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Come on. Love works no hill to your neighbor. The Lord said, War, love worketh no ill, meaning wickedness to his neighbor. A neighbor is a fellow Israelite. When the church, you ever hear the Christians say, love thy neighbor, and they, 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 try to, they try to push out, that means love everybody? No, it's not. That's a law in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus. To love your neighbor is to love another Israelite. That's a love another Israelite. It's not, it doesn't mean to love everybody. The law wasn't given to everybody. But the Christians will have you believe that that means it's talking about everybody. Read that book. Uh, look at the word neighbor. Sure. Yeah. Brother, I'll get you the word neighbor. It's the Bible dictionary. The new uh, son of mine comes out by dictionary. Mm -hmm. Look at the word neighbor. And this book this book was put together by the so called scholar, white scholars. So neighbor. Okay. Uh, so you, you're, you're saying that God doesn't look at his whole evenly as, as no, no, he doesn't look at his whole evenly. Because who are the laws given to? You said it's yourself, you're Jew. Now, the law keeps you uh, in a state of mind where you walk in some form of decency. You can't sleep with another man's wife. You can't steal and rob from your neighbor. You can't eat unclean foods. The, the heathen, the non-Jews, they were doing that stuff. They were into other gods and worshiping the sun, worshiping, excuse my language, penises, worshiping animals. They, that was their thing. 
So that they they were filthy in spirit. But we we were all majestic people. We were all great people. And the Lord kept us in, in that state of mind. Today the spirit of Christ keeps you in that mind. We're not saying the Lord's done away with you still have to abide and follow the Lord. But the ultimate uh uh thing you're supposed to dedicate your spirit to is who you call Jesus Christ. We and again we say that in the Hebrew you know, shot. Right. The word neighbor, neighbor. Commandment 6 to 10 deal with to duty towards one another. The Old Testament neighbor meant one who lived by a fellow Israelite. See that? We didn't get for Neighbor, commandment 6 to 10 deal with duty one towards another. The Old Testament neighbor meant one who lived by a fellow Israelite. A fellow Israelite. So that's not that's not everybody. So when Christ, Jesus Christ, who said, love thy neighbor, who was he talking about? He wasn't talking about everybody. I wish he was writing out the Bible. Well, they, right. So, what does prove to you that the word neighbor means a fellow Israelite? So, when the brother, when Christ was saying that love your neighbor, he's talking about the people of your own race, okay? The white man is not your neighbor, he's your enemy, okay? That's why when you look at history, we talk about what the Romans, they were persecuting our people like dogs, man. Because the Greeks and the, and the, the, the Ptolemies, they were slaughtering us. And so the so-called white man, he's, what he does, when he conquers the, the, the northern kingdom, the so-called Dominican and the Puerto Rican tribe, and the rest of the tribe, the white man bring a, a, a white Jesus and bring loose uh, Christianity in order to destroy our people. Christianity is the main thing that destroys black and Hispanic today in America. Okay, like from example, Malcolm X was teaching black men, listen, fight the white man back. But Martin Luther King said, no, love the so-called white man. But there's no scripture in the Bible telling you so to love the so-called European. The, the white man is our enemies. This is Leviticus. Okay. This is Leviticus 19, verse 17. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So the people on the sign, those are our brothers. You understand? Asians, Dominicans, Cubans, Mexicans, those are our brothers. We're not supposed to hate our brothers. We get mad at them, right. but we're not supposed to hate our brothers or our sisters. It's like the Islams. I'm going to get to that later. You understand? It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against the children of thy people. The white man is not my people. The Chinese, they're not my people. These Indians are not my people. Even Africans, they are not my people. So you shouldn't care about them. I don't care about them. I don't care about them. I care about my people. Now, am I going to walk around and start killing white people? No, I'm not going to do that. Because that goes against the Bible. Just go out there and start killing white people, Chinese, Japanese, East Indian. But I'm going to, I'm going to focus on what to do about my people. Because when you check it out, in the Bible, and just common sense, and just history-wise, nations had a hand in putting those people into slavery or ripping them off or robbing them or killing them. Do any of those people I named, do they show any strong love for our people? On a high level. No, they don't. You might get an individual that might show some respect to our people, but they don't love our people. They have no love for our people. What do they have to oh, Read it, um, Romans 13 and 10. Check it out. Neighbor again. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Check it out. Love work no ill to his neighbor. See, so ill is a, a, a like you've heard of feel, the statement, ill feelings. We're not supposed to do any wickedness to our neighbors, a brother or sister. Love worketh no ill to that person's neighbor. If you're in the spirit of love, which we are into love, we ain't supposed to do nothing against our neighbor, a fellow Israelite. Come on. Uh, love is the fulfilling of the law. See, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is part, is, is the law. The most high is about love. Which, what was your next question? You had another question. Um, uh, this is something like well, this. I live in a Hasidic neighborhood. Are those Jews? Can you speak up a little louder? Uh, I live in a Hasidic neighborhood, like a neighborhood of like, Jewish people. So I, I think, right? They're, 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 they're a bit different. There you go. <laughs> They're yeah. not Jews. They're not. No, they're not Jews. They are imposters. They're converts. You got a book. You're going to bring out a book. You're going to read. going to give you a little history out of the book. They are converts. They are not the real Jews. It's a lie. It's a hoax. When we fell in 70 AD, we ran into Africa. And the Africans sold us to the white man. And these bastards took our nationality. So what we're doing now, we're trying to educate our people on who they really are. These people hate our guts. They think they're better and above all people. It's a lie. These are not the chosen people of God. The 
so-called blacks who are out of their mind walking around crazy, the so-called black women, as well as Hispanics, and uh, North American Indians and Seminole Indians, those are the chosen people of God. These guys are, are converts. Yes. Okay, this is a book called uh, Rescue and Liberation. You got it, right? But, but, it's called Rescue and Liberation. That was written by a so-called Jew, Isaac Zahar, right? This is what it said on page 115. It said, Lord Mernon had been busy uh, bringing up the Arab League as a counterforce to Zionism. Zionism is established of Jewish state, okay? When it was a colonial secretary in 1941, 1942, you can hear me oppose Jewish immigration into Palestine. In other words, it was against it, right? He said he went so far as to declare June 9, 1942 in the House of Lords that the Jews were really not the descendants of the ancient Hebrews, right? But a Mongol race with no legitimate, legitimate claim to the Holy Land. This a white man said that. That the so-called Jews that come to Jews, those are not Jews in, in Israel. Those are pastors. They're known as Mongolians. You know Mongolians? These are white Turkish white men that occupied Mongolia. Gentiles, they're not Jews. This book was written by white men, okay? And we got many other books. This is like the least of all the books we have, okay? Now, on page 84, it's a book called From Babylon Timbuktu, right? It's a very good book written by a, a, a very well known historian, Rudolf Oz Winslow. Guy is a brilliant historian on page 84. He said on page 84 that uh, he said in the year 65 BC, the Roman general under Juno Pompey captured Jerusalem in 70 AD, right? Juno Vespasian's son, Titus, put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter during the period of the military governor of Palestine. Many outbreaks and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people, which is what the northern kingdom, the, 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 the southern kingdom. So I got three main trials that were during the time of Christ. You got Juno, Benjamin, and Levi, right? Okay, then it said, um, he said it has been estimated that uh, what's it? Uh, one million. Over one million Jews fled into Africa. He said the slave master market was full of black Jewish slaves. Slaves. Okay. So when Jerusalem got destroyed in 70 AD, the black the black Hebrew, the real Jews, fled up into Europe. Why did they fled up into Europe? Because you got blacks up in Europe. You got some of them fled up into China. Okay. You got fled, some fled up into Britain, all over the world. See. So this book showing you that these people that come and say Jews were, are not Jews. There's no record telling you that these people are Jews. No record. I don't care what history people do research on, these are not the Jews that was with, with Moses. The Jews are the black and Hispanic. Okay? You got a lot of Hispanic get angry and get ignorant of the facts. Okay? Because if Columbus was alive, Columbus would tell you the same thing I'm telling you. That the Jews in Mecca were Hispanic tribes and the blacks. Why did Columbus have black people on a slave ship with him, as he interpreted? How do you know Columbus speaks Latin and speaks Spanish? So what's the purpose Columbus have he interpreted? Because he was come, he know that the people out in America are Jews, black and Hispanic. Okay? But the problem is, like I said, there's no evidence these people are Jews. None. I don't give a damn what research it does. These people have no connection to Israel at all. They stole the land in 1948. It was the British, um, and the Balfour, uh, Lord Balfour is the one that put them in the land of Israel. And they came from Russia, they came from England, they came all, all over the world and occupied Jerusalem because the Arabs stole Jerusalem from the blacks in 632 AD. Okay? So these people are, that's in Israel today, those are not Jews. Those are Gentiles. Even Ethiopians, they're not Jews. Those are converts. No different from the, the average white man. They just stole our nationality and lied and claimed to be Jews. Right. And now they fighting for the land, claiming that whoever uh, are the fathers of that land are Jews. They don't belong in that land. The people on that side there, they belong in that land. But the people on that side.